from a strength point of view, Australia tends to be very, very good with knowledge and know-how and IP and being able to export IP and that know-how to, I guess, our Asia-Pacific neighbours. Um, unfortunately, we aren't necessarily leading in the areas of looking at the policy and putting a price on carbon. So what we look at is alternate ways where we can basically drive economic and um, green investments through a better understanding of the impact a business has on its surroundings, its supply chain partners through its carbon emissions. We help uh, break that carbon emission footprint into its components, address the entire supply chain footprint and then look at ways where a organisation can work closer with its suppliers and with its customers to reduce its carbon footprint. Australia is not a pioneer in clean tech. I think um, the challenges that Australia has, like New Zealand, largely come down to scale. Um, in order to uh, expand and, and take some of the great innovation that exists in Australia and New Zealand, we have to feature more on the radar screen of uh, the global um, corporates. Um, and, and that means that we have to really ask ourselves some fundamental questions. One, do we have the policy mechanisms uh, designed appropriately to, 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 to achieve scale, to achieve growth? Um, to support going overseas. Um, two, uh, do, we, uh, do we have clarity in terms of how we are using what we've got? So for example, at the moment, um, you, the vast majority of risk capital in, in Australia goes into mining. Um, yet you look at the concentration of our clean techs in Australia and only 1% are focused on mining. And that's clearly because a lot of them are focused on 55% or so are focused on energy because energy is the, the big contributor of, of carbon emissions, etc. However, the question you have to ask is, are we actually taking full advantage of everything we've got in order to deploy clean technologies? It's the same in New Zealand. Uh, risk capital in New Zealand goes into property and land, yet in New Zealand 1% of their clean tech initiatives are focused on property. So there's a, there's a disconnect there that we somehow need to weave into the equation of finding the lowest you know, cost of abatement for the solutions that we need to deal with the carbon problem. So for Australia and New Zealand, it's, it's about achieving scale. It's about what some people call the value of death scenario, which is in part about a mindset. So it's about thinking global. Um, and that means getting partners on board, high quality partners that can support that global transition. Um, technology costs will always be a feature, uh, that will be a moving uh, piece of the puzzle and you know there are some businesses out there that will be able to deliver technologies at the tenth of the price and they'll, they'll do it very well, they'll be breakthrough and they will be outright winners, um, which will be fantastic. Um, but any venture capital firm will tell you that to find those you've got to perhaps invest in a hundred businesses, you know, or look at a hundred at least uh, before you invest in one that's going to be you know, absolutely spot on for what you want. So. It's, it's time, and um, it's a 10-year time scale at least, minimum. Um, we need to broaden our vision to pick up the biosequestration areas of soil, carbon, algae, um, plant stones and the like. Um, it's going to be a basket of combinations that I think are virtually unique to Australia and its uh, topography. And I think we need to, that vision to be ta transferred by government to see that it's picked up within the Kyoto Protocol. I think there's so much opportunity to see farmers benefit enormously and add to the sustainability of our country and also contribute to some of the other broad acre countries around the world. I think uh, the Australian sector, clean tech sector, will have a significant role globally uh, because a number of the uh, areas of clean tech development uh, are characterised by significant advances where Australians are, are at the leading edge. One is solar thermal, um, where we've got Transfield investing in, in Spain. Uh, another one is geothermal, where there's uh, a large number of listed geothermal aspirants um, developing engineered geothermal system projects in Australia. The third is, is, is our own area, which is uh, to do with Granix heat conversion technology, which is, uh, is technology that has worldwide applicability and a vast potential market.